Nice folks, it's in place news on YouTube. How cool is that? Bringing you the top headlines in under 10 minutes, just like we do here every day. My name's Nar Williams. It's February 7th, 2008. The big news coming out this morning, Republican Mitt Romney threw in the towel, suspending his presidential bid because, you know, he really had a chance. I can see McCain salivating now for that nomination, like a fat kid waiting for a moon pie in the microwave. Moving on. Residents in Tennessee are sifting through what's left after severe weather ripped apart homes and left numerous people dead. Many victims have harrowing stories of how they survived the storm. I tell you, I was just praying to God that we were going to make it through it. Barbie McEwen's family made it through the storm, but just barely. When the tornado approached Jackson, Tennessee, the family ran to the storm shelter, getting inside just seconds before the roof blew off. And we could see our house flying over us while we were down in the shelter. So the only thing we could do was pray. Their home was destroyed, but McEwen, her husband, and two children are all okay. Their dog, though, had refused to go inside the shelter. Luckily found the dog over at the neighbor's house. How she made it, I don't know, but it's just God's will. Stories of survival cover the Tennessee landscape, littered with debris from so many demolished homes. This is the aftermath from the nation's deadliest barrage of twisters in almost 23 years. Homes ripped apart, vehicles tossed in the air, entire trees smashed apart. In Lafayette, the Clark family was sifting through what was left. Most treasured, family pictures. The storm was especially frightening for the children. Me and my sister were already in bed and my daddy ran in there and told us to get up and get in the closet. It was about 10:20, And we jumped in there and all of a sudden we heard some noise. We heard a big roaring sound and the house was shaking from side to side. Then uh, it felt like the floor collapsed and the walls and fell on my sister. The next thing I know we're all flying up in the air with the house. And then uh, I got knocked out. That's all I know. Other neighbors were finding debris from neighbors' homes in their yards. That man's barn, he had a big barn up there. I think, I think it's some of that, but I don't know what all the tin is up there. I, don't, I didn't think we had that much tin. President Bush is expected to visit the area Friday and meet with some of those whose lives were upended by nature's fury. It's just, it's really sad because there's nothing that's going to, you know, bring back these belongings and... You know, we're just, we're really sad, but we're, we're lucky to be alive. So none of this matters because it can all be replaced. Ed Donahue, The Associate. A standoff in the San Fernando Valley erupts in gunfire, killing one Los Angeles SWAT team officer and wounding another. This is the first SWAT officer killed in the line of duty. A veteran SWAT officer has been killed in Los Angeles after a shootout with a man claiming to have killed members of his family. The death is a first for this SWAT team. And until this morning, no SWAT officer has been killed in the line of duty. Despite thousands of incidents, this elite unit has responded to over the years. But despite the efforts of the hospital personnel here, 51-year-old Officer Randy Simmons passed away just after 1 o'clock this morning. Another officer was wounded. He is expected to survive. Police officials, along with the mayor of Los Angeles, passed along the news before dawn. This is a sad day here in the city of Los Angeles. The standoff was resolved, the ordeal ending with the gunmen being killed by the officers. Our thoughts go out to the killed and wounded officers. A prep football player was drafted to a Pac-10 school. He had a choice of a couple of schools, so the press came out to cover his pick. It was all very exciting. But it was also poppycock. The douchebag was putting all of us on. And uh, I decided that uh, I'm going to be playing football at the University of California. For a high school football player, being recruited to a Pac-10 school, well, that's a dream come true. But in this case, it's anything but. Because this offensive lineman made the whole thing up. I just want to say thank you to my family over there. I mean, everyone at this school has been so supportive of what I've been doing. This is Nevada resident Kevin Hart, Friday, accepting congratulations at a school ceremony. Here, Hart announced that he had been recruited by both the University of Oregon and the University of California, Berkeley. After publicly choosing to play for the Golden Bears football program, it turns out 
Hart had some explaining to do as the announcement was questioned immediately. Hart quickly changed his story, saying he had been duped by a man he had paid to help promote him to college football programs. Detectives continued to poke around, and after that alleged promoter couldn't be found, Kevin Hart admitted Wednesday he was just pretending to live the dream. The high school student has apologized, and now the district attorney's office in Reno is deciding whether prosecution is warranted. Local school officials call the entire incident a shame. Sandy Kozell, the Associated Press. There you have it, folks, the top headlines in under 10 minutes from M Place News. And if you want more, we are streaming all day at mplacenews.com. You can watch us right there in our browser, or because we like to keep things simple and easy, you can download our free desktop player. The desktop player is uh, it's free, it's easy, it doesn't take up much time, uh, uh, a space on your hard drive. Hello! And you can watch us stream from your desktop uh, all day, every day, at inplacenews.com. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nar Williams. Let's check out uh, the latest headlines with an AP News Minute. This is AP News Minute. Authorities say two Los Angeles police officers barricaded inside a San Fernando Valley home where three people may have been killed. The officers were part of a SWAT team. Local radio reports the man called police last night saying he killed his family and wanted police to come out and kill him. Rescue crews are still looking for victims from this week's outbreak of tornadoes, which devastated parts of the South. President Bush has called the governors of the five states to tell them the administration is ready to help. Bush will visit the area Friday. The storm system responsible for those deadly tornadoes in the South Tuesday night could keep the space shuttle Atlantis on the ground this afternoon. The mission is to take a $2 billion European science lab to the space station. It's already two months behind schedule because of fuel gauge problems. A missing couple have been rescued in Utah after spending more than a week trapped in heavy snow. They were spotted Wednesday by a snowplow driver. The couple say they used seat cushions from their vehicle as snowshoes to help them hike to the area where they were found. Rita Foley, the Associated Press, with AP News Minute. Neurofibromatosis. Neurofibromatosis. What? Neurofibromatosis, or NF, is a genetic disorder that causes tumors to grow anywhere on or in the body. It can lead to blindness, deafness, loss of limbs, brain tumors, and severe disfigurement. One in 4,000 babies are born with NF, more than cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy combined. Right now, there is no cure, but research is making progress. So let's try it again. Neurofibromatosis. Let me make it easy for you. Children's Tumor Foundation. Children's Tumor Foundation. The Children's Tumor Foundation, dedicated to ending neurofibromatosis through research. Let's all start saying it. The Children's Tumor Foundation. Children's Tumor Foundation.